To ask a question, please hit the raise your hand function and we'll call on you. I'll turn it over to Coach now. You know, I feel like um, over the last couple of weeks, not having an opportunity to play, uh, we've uh, got a lot of really good work in, got some guys healthy. Uh, you know, our guys continue to bring a lot of energy and effort every day to practice. Uh, love their attitude, uh, willingness to keep improving. Um, know they're excited about Saturday. Uh, we're excited the opportunity to be back in Neyland, um, you know, playing against a good Florida team. So, uh, it, it, it's a great opportunity for us uh, to get a chance to kind of, um, you know, turn this season around, uh, play our best game, and it's something we've worked hard uh, over the last 10 days to get ready for. Questions for Coach? Let everybody get here. I will start with Gustavo. Coach, in terms of starting quarterback, have you made a decision for the Saturday's game? No, no. We'll, we'll make a decision as we get closer to the game. Other questions? We'll go to Austin Price. Coach, you talked about on the uh, conference call about, you know, Keyshawn, Amari, Jimmy, and the other Jimmy, and D and some of those younger guys that made a lot of strides the last five weeks. Um, what is it specifically that they're doing better now than what they were doing then? And how close do you think they are to making like a real impact as far as getting real quality time on the field? Well, you know, all these guys have played on special teams. They've all had a chance to play. Um, you know, it's really just about opportunity. Um, you know, when you, when you talk about if you're not out there on the field, it's hard to improve. Uh, so uh, whether it's in a game or uh, in practice or whatever it is, so, you know, just learning what it's like uh, in a in a routine, a, a college regimen, uh, classes, weight room, um, practice, meetings, you know, preparation. So um, just kind of getting in a routine and getting a chance to to be consistent uh, over a long period of time has helped all of them. Patrick Brown, then Blake Topmeyer. Jeremy, you also talked earlier today about some of those other guys at outside linebacker that are going to have to step up. Could you kind of maybe ex expand on the uh, development you've seen uh, this season from both uh, from Tyler and, and Morvin and kind of what you've seen from, from Roman over his couple of seasons here with you guys? Um, you know, Roman, you know, played really well early. Uh, he's all last year was a really, really good special teams for special teams player for us. Uh, played some some minutes there, especially on third down. Um, you know, when he, he got a little bit banged up early in the season and uh, his his role probably decreased a little bit, but he's getting healthier and uh, it's good to get him back. Um, you know, Tyler has uh, continued to seem like to play more and more snaps every game uh, and and, and uh, not unusual for a young guy. He just continues to earn the opportunity. You know, Morvin's a guy that uh, really can play a lot of different positions uh, because of his versatility. You know, we've we've moved him around a little bit, uh, but uh, really in the last uh, several weeks, you know, you, you start seeing the game kind of slowing down for him, uh, you know, which is good to see because he, he's a guy that plays really, really fast. Blake? Yeah, Jeremy, just kind of following up on, on that thought, you mentioned Morvin. I, I noted, you know he started the season at outside backer and then you moved him to inside. Where had he been practicing uh, up, up until – uh, recently here, had, had he been at inside or was he working at outside too? Well, he's a guy that on first and second down, you know, we would we would like to develop as an inside backer. Uh, on third down, uh, he he moves to the outside and and be, is, becomes a rusher. Uh, so it's uh, when the season started, we moved him, we started him on the outside, and uh, obviously we had a little bit of injuries there in the middle of the season. So to create some depth, we moved him in there and. Um, really with he's benefited by us not playing uh just to be honest uh kind of getting these camp type practices and going back to the basics and fundamentals it's really caught him up at inside backer and uh there's probably a little more multiples there uh but 
when you when you learn that part of it from inside out, uh, it probably clears things up for you uh, as far as the big picture of our defense. So it's been good for him. It's good for his development. And then, uh, unless I'm mistaken, I don't think we've seen Martavius French this year. Where's he at in his development? Uh, what's going on with him? You know, he's really worked hard um, this this season to re to change his body. I think when he got here, he was 251 pounds. Uh, last week he was 226, uh, and, and you can see, uh, you know, really the just slimming up. Uh, you know, playing faster, being quicker. Uh, so we'll we'll build him back up. But guy that's really smart, um, and and I'm excited about his future here. Wes Rucker, then back to Austin Price. Jeremy, with the number of guys that, that you've had out, I guess, the past couple of weeks, has that caused any sort of logistical issues on getting practice done the way you want it to? Or have you all kind of been through enough of this now where you can you can handle it? No, well, when this is the first time we've had this number of guys out uh, in the last couple of weeks since all the way back in fall camp. Uh, but just – Really, probably taking the pads off, um, not completely, but probably not as many days in pads or shells, uh, just because of numbers. Because if we lose a guy or two, it, it'd really be tough to practice. Uh, uh, but our, our guys have done a really nice job, and um, so it, it, it's been very productive for the last couple of weeks. It might be kind of hard to to answer this, but in terms of where a freshman class would sort of normally be at this point in the year, everything that's gone on. I guess for the past eight, nine, ten months, whatever it's been, how, are those guys significantly behind where they would be on average, or have y'all been able to kind of play catch up and work with what you got? Well, I, I feel like uh, just from a time frame, you know, when when we, we we reported back in June, but we didn't do any football in June. Everything was kind of you know because the kids had been off for um, I guess three months since March the twelfth. So you know, the first two or three weeks was really. Um, is mandated by the SEC uh, to make sure the guys were healthy to kind of get them ready to start football. Um, and we started that in July, and of course, um, probably across the country, uh, especially after the 4th of July, uh, the COVID numbers kind of crept up. So guys have been in and out, uh, and not everybody's had the same circumstance. So there's, that's why some guys are probably – uh, had an opportunity to contribute more this year than maybe others. Uh, I'm not sure that has anything to do with ability. It may be just more circumstance. But um, over the last really six to eight weeks with the extra practices, and, you know, we've really kind of worked hard to, to develop those guys. Uh, and, you know, they've had great attitudes. And each game, more and more of them are playing and, and creating bigger rows for themselves. Coach, I know you guys were high on Cooper Mays when you all signed him out of Catholic last year with his, about his mental makeup and stuff. But the offseason surgery and then a few setbacks along the way, were you proudest of him as far as what he's given you in that jumbo set? And then as a center, what's he give you guys as well? Well, you know, Cooper's really had an unusual um, probably last 18 months. He obviously had an injury in high school and um, played hurt um, his senior year. And with a surgery and, and coming back. So um, didn't get a, a chance to have a lot of off season, but guy's a tough kid. He's smart. He's played a lot for us for um, at the tight end, excuse me, at the tight end position. Um, you know, he'll, he'll play Saturday. So, um, you know, he, he's got a bright future, um, you know, and it just needs more opportunities. Trey Wallace, then back to David Alvin. Jeremy, what has been the process for the guys in, in contact tracing over the last couple of weeks when it comes to maybe getting a workout in and whatnot, also staying up to date on what you guys are doing game plan wise? I know you had mentioned that you were hopeful that some of them would be able to be out on Friday and playing the game. So how's that process been keeping them, you know, kind of 100 percent in a way, just as y'all prepare for Florida? Right. Well, a lot of them have experience with it because uh, this isn't the first time. So, you know, dating all the way back to July, you know, when they're in contact tracing, um, they still can, you know, be in the Zoom meetings. Uh, um, it, it, you know, if they don't have COVID, uh, they can do a workout, but it's got to be uh, by themselves. So 
uh, put some logistics there with our strength staff, but you know, they can be at practice. Uh, they can, they can do workouts on their own with our strength staff, but it, it's not practice. And a follow up to that real quick. Have you guys gotten your test results back from yesterday? We did. We did. And everybody is good to go. No positives or can you report that? Well, we, we had a couple of positives. I think one of them, um, was an off the field, uh, personnel and, uh, one player, but with these things, you have to go back and follow up to make sure it's not a false positive. So it's a, it's usually a couple of days before you figure that out. David. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy, the, uh, that power formation you guys used earlier in the season, I know Riley has gotten hurt, but what made you guys go away from that? Um, and, and prevent you from putting, you know, another offensive lineman in there uh, instead of Riley. Well, we, we were playing Riley, we were playing Jerome and playing Cooper early in the year. And all of those guys um, kind of in the Missouri game got banged up. And uh, um, Jameer obviously got hurt against South Carolina. We got down some numbers there. So, um, you know, we've used it off and on uh, throughout the season and used other guys in there, but we've not used it as much because those guys probably – have had a little more experience playing that position. Uh, we put a lot of time and effort in, in, into it in the off season. So um, something that we'll continue to use. Uh, I think it's a good package. I know losing Riley Lockley was a, was a big deal, uh, you know, because he played really well uh, in the first two games. And, you know, he'll, he'll be back and he'll get an opportunity to, to finish his senior year. And, uh, you know, me and him talked about this before. He's excited about it because, uh, he never really got a chance to be red-shirted. So he's, he's seen him every day. He's got a smile on his face. He's working hard to get back. Last question, Vince Ferrar. Coach, I know you guys offensively were a little bit better on third down against Auburn, but what kind of emphasis both offensively and defensively have, have you been able to put into working on those third downs, both on offense and defense? Well, you know, you go back and do a lot of quality control and uh, see the things that you've done well, see the things that you've, you've not done so well, try to figure it out. Uh, is it personnel? Is it scheme? Um, is it execution? So probably it's been a little bit of both uh, or some of all of that for us this year. So, you know, we, we've got to do a, a, a better job uh, on third down, especially on defense. I thought uh, the last game our offense was much improved, but defensively, uh, particularly in the last two games, you know, just ha had lots of opportunities to get off the field um, and didn't, and which enabled our opponent to kind of extend drives and in and, and, and turn get points. All right. Thank you all. See you all.